Welcome back, everybody. It is July in Pokemon Go. This is gonna be the biggest month of the year for Pokemon Go. Of course, we have a global Go Fest happening in just over a week's time. But in this video, we're gonna go over all the event details that are happening this month from spotlight hours to raid bosses to all the big events, dates, and times for you. Plus, I'm also gonna break down the first two events happening for Global Go Fest, so you can be well prepared for those. So let's jump into it, starting with the spotlight hours. On July 2nd was that Pikachu wearing a cake Cat spotlight hour with two times catch XP. Then on July 9th, we're gonna have Spiel spotlight hour with two times catch candy. On July 16th, will be Binacle spotlight hour with two times transfer candy. So that's the one that's happening right after Global Go Fest. So you can save up all your Pokemon from Go Fest that you want extra candies for and transfer them during that event for two times transfer candy. Then on July 23rd, we're gonna have both Diglett and Alolan Diglett with two times evolution XP. And then finally on July 30th, we'll have Toga de Maru with two times catch Stardust. All right, now let's talk about the raids. Tons of great stuff this month. First, we have the Mega Raids where we're gonna see Mega Swampert from July 8th to July 23rd. And then from July 23rd to August 3rd, we're gonna have Mega Agron in the Mega Raids. I do think we're also gonna see another Steel Mega appear for a little bit, but we'll talk about that in the events section. For right now, those are our Mega Raids that are listed. And then in our five star raids, we're gonna see all those Ultra Beasts coming back. So from July 8th to July 9th, we'll have Guzzlord. From July 9th to July 10th, we'll have Nihiligo. And then from July 10th to July 11th, in the Southern Hemisphere, you'll see Celesteela. And then in the Northern Hemisphere during those times, we will see Kartana. From July 11th to the 12th, in the Eastern Hemisphere, we'll see Stakataka. And then July 11th to 12th, that same time frame, in the Western Hemisphere, we'll see Blacephalon return. And then from July 12th to July 15th, in the Americas and Greenland, we will see Buzzwool. And then from that same time period, July 12th to July 15th. In Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and India, you'll be getting Pheromosa. And then also during that same time frame, July 12th to July 15th, you'll get Circuitry in the Asia Pacific region. Then from July 15th to July 23rd, Articuno will be returning. And then our final five-star raid boss will be Tornadus in its incarnate form from July 23rd to August 3rd. Now that is not all the big news for the raids. We do have another event just similar to the one that happened before Sinnoh Tour, where we got a week of raid hours. Same thing is gonna happen here before GoFest. Leading up to it, we're gonna get another week of raid hours. That is gonna feature our Ultra Beasts as part of that inbound Ultra Space event. So taking a look at that, on July 8th, we are gonna have Guzzlord. On July 9th, we're gonna have Nihiligo. And then on July 10th, depending which hemisphere you're in, in the Southern, you're gonna get Celesteela raid hour. In the Northern hemisphere, you're gonna get Kartana raid hour. And then on July 11th, again, divided up by hemisphere. In the Eastern hemisphere, you're getting Stack Attacka. In the Western hemisphere, Blacephalon. On July 12th, another one divided up by region. If you're in the Americas and Greenland, you're gonna get Buzzwool raid hour. If you're in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and India, you're gonna get Pheromosa. And then if you're in the Asia Pacific region, you're gonna get a Zerkatry raid hour. And then we're also gonna get Articuno raid hour on July 17th. And on July 24th and July 31st, Tornadus incarnate form is gonna have raid hours as well. And if you're wondering which Ultra Beasts are the best ones, we will go over that in a little bit. But now let's take a look at all the events that are happening in July. So our first event here is the Aquatic Paradise event. This is to sync up with the New York Go Fest event where Shiny Ducklet is being released. I'll go over this one a little bit later. That is happening from July 6th to July 9th. And then July 8th to July 13th is that inbound from Ultra Space event. So that is the one that is featuring all of those Ultra Beast raid hours. I'll touch on that a little bit more later as well. And then of course, July 13th to July 14th is Pokemon Go Fest 2020 global event that happens 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day. I will, of course, come out with a video going over all the details for that. That's gonna be a fairly big video. There's a lot of stuff to cover, but it's very important to know what's happening each day so you can be prepared and get the most amount out of GoFest. So I'll put out a video on that a little bit later. And then we're gonna get into the Ultra Unlocks. If you're not familiar, these are things that we unlock by hitting goals during Global Go Fest. Starting on July 17th to July 27th is Ultra Unlock Part One, Better Together. Then July 21st is that July Community Day, that's Tynamo. And then July 25th to July 30th is Ultra Unlock Part Two, Strength of Steel event. And then July 27th, is Ultra Unlock Part 3 Mega 
raid day running from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. So an expanded mega raid day, it seems. Now, if you notice, this event is actually happening during the Strength of Steel event. So my guess here is this is going to be a Steel Mega. Mega Agron will also be in the mega raids at this time. I'm thinking they're not going to feature that as an ultra unlock, though. It's just not super meta relevant or useful. But this could be Mega Metagross or Mega Lucario. There's a little bit of a hint that it might be Mega Lucario. There was this data mine from the Pokemon group. So you can see here, there is a new fighting fast move being added to the game. Mega Lucario does get this move. So this might be hinting that this is the Mega Lucario raid day, but we will have to wait and see. I'm excited to see what we're gonna get for these ultra unlocks. And as a fourth little ultra unlock bonus, there is supposed to be some kind of thing that we can unlock for that July community day as well. Honestly, I have no idea what that could be, but I'm kind of excited to find out once we hit those unlocks. So there is a lot of good stuff coming in July. But now let's jump into those first two events that are happening before Global Go Fest. I'll give you a quick rundown. There's not a lot of details for each one, so we can cover them fairly quickly in this video. And then I'll also talk a little bit about the best Pokemon in both of those events. So let's start with that Aquatic Paradise event, again, running from Saturday, July 6th to Tuesday, July 9th. For the bonuses for this event, we are gonna get an increased chance of encountering event Pokemon from Incense, two times XP for catching Pokemon, and Incense exclusive Pokemon appearances. In the wild, we are gonna see Horsey, Staryu, Wingull, Corpfish, Clamperl, Ducklet, Frillish, all of which can be shiny, including Ducklet for the first time. That's a shiny debut. There are two useful Pokemon in here. Wingull evolves into Pelipper and Frillish evolves into Jellicent. Both of them very good Pokemon for Great League and Ultra League. Then there's going to be special incense encounters during this event as well. We will see Shelder, Lapras, Finneon, and Frillish coming off the incense. So Lapras there, quite a rare one if you don't have one already. Everything there also can be shiny. There will be field research task encounters as well for Corfish, Clamperl, Finneon, and Frillish again. Again, everything there can be shiny. There's gonna be collection challenges as well to complete and you'll get rewards for encounters, usually those event-themed encounters. There will also be a $2 USD paid timed research that are gonna get you encounters with more ducklets, so some more shiny checks there. Four lucky eggs, two incense, and 20 ducklet candies. If you don't mind spending a little bit of money on this game for some items, as well as a few shiny checks, then this research is worth it based on the items. But again, that's only if you like spending real money on the game. Otherwise, just skip it. Hunt that shiny in the wild. Okay, now let's talk about that inbound from Ultra Space event. This is the one that is going to feature all the raid hours for those Ultra Beasts. This is happening Monday, July 8th to Saturday, July 13th. Once again, we are gonna have those Ultra Beasts appearing in five-star raids each day and will be featured in a raid hour from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. local time that same day. For the bonuses, the remote raid pass limit will be increased to 20 from Monday, July 8th to Thursday, July 11th. And there will be no limit on remote raids from Friday, July 12th to Sunday, July 14th. So for global go fest. And then trainers level 31 and up are guaranteed to receive Candy XL for trading Pokemon from Monday, July 8th at 10 a.m. to Sunday, July 14th at 11.59 p.m. There's also going to be a free timed research similar to when the Ultra Beasts all came out last time, and that will get you an encounter with each one of the Ultra Beasts. So even if you can't remote raid for one that is outside of your hemisphere, you're still gonna be able to get a chance to get it from this timed research and get a shiny check on it as well, except of course for Stack Attacka and Blacephalon. This event is also going to be the debut of special backgrounds. So if you don't know, there are catch card backgrounds for in-person events. Generally, they feature some kind of skyline shot of the city or some pretty shot of the city that appears behind the Pokemon in the catch screen. This event will feature special backgrounds that you can possibly get. They're not guaranteed, so that makes them a little bit more rare, a little bit more collectible. But you can potentially get these special backgrounds once you catch a Pokemon after defeating a raid. And then there is also going to be a global challenge for this event. During that, we will all work together to complete a global challenge. If we complete it, then during Global Go Fest, we are going to get to use Beast Balls when we are catching those Ultra Beasts after defeating them in raids. And then there is a second little bonus here, which is that party power will charge faster 
when we are doing raids with a party. If you don't know, when you do party play with other trainers and you go into a raid, you get this party power meter that fills up. And when you fill it up, you activate it. Your next charge move does double damage. Very handy for small groups of raiders to take down these big raid bosses. So being able to charge it up twice as fast means you're gonna be able to do raids even quicker, especially if you're in a small party. And then finally, there is gonna be a ticket for this event as well. This ticket will come with a lot of rewards, as you can see here. It is $5, but for that, you're gonna get an additional 5,000 XP for every completed raid. So normally for these Ultra Beasts, you get 10,000 XP. An additional five will make that 15,000 XP for every raid completed. You'll get two times Stardust for winning Ultra Beast raid battles. Stardust, the most important resource in Pokemon Go. You'll get one additional candy awarded for catching Pokemon in five-star raids, plus one additional candy XL. That one is a big one there. And then also up to two free raid passes from spinning photo discs at gyms. Normally when they say that, that means two bonus ones. This wording isn't entirely clear, so I'm not sure whether you'll be able to do two or three free raids. And then this ticket also comes with a timed research that is going to get you 10 Cosmog Candy, 5 Nihiligo, 5 Buzzwool, 5 Feramosa, 5 Circuitry, 5 Celesteela, 5 Cartana, 5 Guzzlord, 5 Sakataka, and 5 Blacephalon Candy XL. So that's pretty big. Lots of Candy XL in there for those Ultra Beasts, plus 2,024 Stardust and one star piece. There are gonna be some bundles in the web store as well. I don't usually cover these anymore. You, there's usually a bundle for most events. You can always go to the web store and check it if you want. But I wanted to cover this one because this is sometimes a useful one for people leading up to GoFest. There's a $5 USD storage box bundle that's gonna get you an item bag upgrade, Pokemon storage upgrade, one remote raid pass, one premium battle pass, one incubator and one super incubator. And then there's these two other ones here too, also one for $20 and one for $40. But that $5 USD one is the one that might be most useful to people leading up to GoFest to expand your item storage and expand your Pokemon storage. Both very handy for this type of event. There might be a lot of new Pokemon coming out that you don't have or new shinies. So you might need that bag space. So that bundle might be good for those people who need to upgrade both of those and don't mind spending a little bit of real money to do it. Now, in terms of the best Ultra Beasts out during this event, let's cover a few of them, starting with Guzzlord. He can fill in as a Dark or Dragon type raid attacker, but there are lots of other better options out there. So this one might just fill in until you get better Dark or Dragon types. It does also rank around the top 100 for Master League and top 20 for Ultra League. However, to get the best Ultra League IVs, you'd have to trade one from a friend who you don't have a high friendship level with. So you can get that low attack stat. There's also Nihiligo, which is a top Top poison type raid attacker, ranks about 80 in the Master League. Kartana is also a top grass type raid attacker. Then we have Buzzwool ranking around 50 in both Ultra League and Master League. Doesn't really rank as a raid attacker though. And then we have Zerkatree as a top electric type raid attacker and can be a little bit of a spice pick in Master League as well. Finally, the last one we're gonna talk about here is Celesteela. Not really good for PvP or for raids. However, it is a flying and steel type and it is absolutely massive. So whenever there is a flying type or steel type showcase, Celesteela can absolutely dominate there, especially if you get a double XL one. If you get a double XL one or multiple of them, definitely hang on to those and try and snipe those showcase wins if you can. All right, everybody, that's all the information I have for you in this video. The global GoFest breakdown video will be coming soon. But right now I want to give a quick shout out to our mythical members, Fallman, Matty B, Assassin Octopus, Body on a Planet, and Kate. Thank you to all of them for supporting the channel at the mythical level. If you found this video useful, consider hitting the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribing for more Pokemon Go news tips and live streams. Both of those things really do help support the channel and I appreciate them a lot. If you want more Pokemon Go content right now, check out one of the videos on screen. Happy hunting. I wish you much shiny luck during this absolutely crazy month of July in Pokemon Go. And we'll see you in the next one, friends. something incredibly funky.